All right, we're gonna come off road here. I got a little dirt patch where I like to mess around doing donuts, and I, I don't typically do this, but this is a bike much like the Kawasaki Vulcan 650S where because of the handling and the just the, the fact that it really feels very, very nimble, I might even say agile, where I feel like I could pull it off and I'm not gonna risk dropping the bike or really hurting it or hurting myself. All right, what up you guys? Welcome back to the channel, John's Moto Garage. As you can see today before us is the ever popular, famous Honda Magna. Every time I talk muscle bikes, performance cruisers, and I've had a lot on the channel, the M109R Boulevard, the Raider, the Warrior, VTX 1800, we talk about that, the Harley V-Rod, I even had a Yamaha V-Max. Everybody always says, dude, you gotta try the Honda Magna. So finally, I picked one up. I said, what the heck, let's see what it's all about. So we're gonna jump on the bike, talk a little bit about it. I'm not gonna like go super in depth. You can check out the Wikipedia page if you wanna know everything and anything, but we will just gloss over some of the basics and I'll compare my thoughts on the motorcycle based on what I've ridden. Like I said before, with the VMAX and some of the other bikes, and is it a Harley killer? Is it not a Harley killer? Is it a Harley wannabe? How does it stack up to Harley? How does it stack up to all those bikes out there? All that and more, the Honda Magna. Let's do a quick walk around. Beautiful V4, 750cc, 45 cubic inch motorcycle. This is a 1997. Little hot rod muscle bike. Two-tone, black and yellow. These are carbureted. I haven't fired it up. Let's see how she starts cold. Oh, she fires right up. No problem at all. We'll live, warm up a little bit. Of course, you got your single disc in the front. It does get some criticism because it has a freaking drum brake in the rear. It is chain drive. And I want to see this. say this is a uh, five-speed. All right. Now, when I think 80s cruiser, this is one of the bikes that jumps into my mind, but this one is actually their 90s edition. This one I think was available from 96 to like 2003. So on a, I don't know if they were the first, probably not, but they came out with like a hybrid performance cruiser way back in the day. It was like 83 to 86 or thereabouts when they first came out with it. They had a V45 Honda Magna, first generation. A year or two later, they did a V65, which is an 1100cc up, bump up from the 750cc. That one didn't do too great. And then they discontinued it for a couple years and then they came back with it in the mid 90s. And that's what we have here, a 97 Magna V something, it's a 750cc. And with this one, they basically took the engine out of the VFR sport bike, which is a really popular sport bike. I've never ridden one of those. Dumped it into this, probably made a few tuning tweaks to it to make it more kind of cruiser setup. And here we have the Honda Magna. Some of the criticism it got initially is, I know it's got a rear drum brake, which I don't know if that was just more common back in the day or what. And I think those were kind of the big criticisms. Now, usually when I think performance cruiser, I always talk about this. Most performance cruisers, they kind of combine the worst of everything. They take a cruiser, which is traditionally slower, but comfortable. And instead they take a, they make a bike that's uncomfortable and still kind of slow compared to sport bikes. That's a cool little car. Anyway, traditionally with your big muscle performance cruisers, I feel like you get a little bit better performance than your typical cruiser, but you sacrifice all the comfort with this really aggressive, not super comfortable motorcycle. And uh, that's why I don't like a lot of the big muscle performance cruisers because they got aggressive ergonomics. You're like reached up over it, uh, you know, far over the tank. And it's just not a great bike. It's like only works as a second or third bike in the stable. Or you have something like the VMAX where the ergonomics aren't super uncomfortable, but the handling is absolutely ferocious. Ferocious? Is that a word? Ferocious? The handling is terrible. 
and the power is just so it's so powerful that it's almost unmanageable that was my experience with the me v max like it was just too much too much that it wasn't even fun to ride and the first thing i noticed when i threw a leg over this magna here is it was surprisingly comfortable for my five foot eight frame you got like mid forward controls the bars aren't super far forward they kind of come back to you still surprisingly comfortable and additionally super super good handling i felt like this thing just felt super nimble like i just wanted to you know flick it into the corners almost like a sport bike you know what i mean so those were the two things initially that i was surprised about pleasantly surprised on and this is a v4 every engine has its own personality and the characteristics of this v4 are a lot different than what most people expect out of a v twin v twins have that low end torque but they don't really have the top end well this v4 it doesn't feel super torquey low end like your harleys but it you can feel across the rev range it's a very smooth linear power pretty much wherever you're at it's responsive and so it's interesting because this bike doesn't really feel fast because it's so smooth but it is a fast bike let's check it out so as you can see it's a fast bike but it's a very high revving bike you see it really likes kind of like the 7k range it feels like it's where it kicks in kicks into gear maxes out at uh, 9500 rpms or thereabouts so anyway this bike has an interesting uh, personality and when i had the kawasaki vulcan 650s which has a parallel twin engine in it i kept saying man i can't believe they've never put a sport bike engine in a in a cruiser frame and everybody's like dude on a magna magna bro look it up and i was like oh my bad so anyway this bike reminds me of the kawasaki vulcan or i should say the vulcan now that i've ridden both reminds me a lot of this bike where you do actually have very manageable power it's not a super super huge displacement but it's very smooth and it does give you a really good kind of mixture of handling as well i mean i'm sitting here cruising you know 95 miles per hour 6,000 rpms and i'm just kind of ripping it out of traffic doesn't feel bad at all this little windscreen from other reviews that i read uh, that i read is is good to have in deflecting the wind because i guess where the bars are it shoots the wind like right into you but that's pretty much any motorcycle if you don't have a windscreen here we are on the freeway this bike i could totally see ripping like long term uh, long distance rides on it i'm cruising again 85 miles miles per hour it doesn't skip a beat super smooth i don't feel tons of vibration um, but i don't think this is a touring bike at least not with its like you know out of the factory setup you don't have floorboards you don't have a massive windshield it's hard to say if this seat would uh would be very comfortable for longer rides i don't like being that guy but here we are being that guy I love a motorcycle that on the freeway has the reserve to you know pass up cars quickly if you need to and kind of get out of the way and I totally feel that on this bike drop it down a gear open up the throttle and you're good to go and then let's talk the uh, suspension and handling which bear in mind I'm not like a professional racer or anything but I have ridden a handful of different motorcycles and I do feel like on this bike it feels pretty well planted uh, here around these corners it's not squirrely wordly wordly squirrely all over the place so overall i think they did good they did real good the biggest thing about this is it's a fun bike to rip around on but i will say it doesn't have that characteristic rumble rumble of a motorcycle or at least of a typical cruiser of a traditional cruiser most people when they think cruiser they're thinking of a harley that rumbles and kind of has that feel to it this bike doesn't this bike is super smooth it's got a freaking sport bike engine in it and uh, additionally the four to four exhaust man i love the way it looks super super quiet i imagine with an aftermarket exhaust it adds some extra personality to the bike as well like horsepower and torque specs on this i don't think they're ridiculous but it's the power to weight ratio where you're going to probably gain a little bit of edge over some of your 
some of the competition because this bike is for a cruiser I think relatively on the light side it's I want to say just over 500 pounds wet maybe I'm way off there though but it doesn't feel heavy at all it does not feel top heavy it's well distributed weight smooth transmission it really does I mean, as far as taking a you know sport bike and turning it into a cruiser, I feel like they did a pretty dang good job on this one. Couldn't have asked for much more. So it kind of blows my mind. This is a two, uh, 1997. Yeah, this is a 97. Stack this up to a Honda Shadow 750, and it's no no question why. But hands down, this thing is going to tear that thing apart. Stack this up to, you know, your Suzuki Boulevard 800, your Kawasaki Vulcan 900. It is crazy how, how much more performance and really overall better handling and just comfort and everything you get. Uh, maybe not comfort, but you get so much more out of this bike, even though it was around in 97. So I can see why there's a lot of people who look at modern cruisers and just think, what the heck, man? Like, is the motorcycle industry going backwards or something? Because with a lot of these modern bikes, the performance, the handling, and in some cases the comfort is way less than what you got decade, two decades earlier. And so it is, it is kind of interesting how we've come to like be okay with a lot less in those categories. It seems to kind of check all those boxes. So I can definitely understand why this has been a popular bike in the past and why a lot of people speak highly of it. Because all in all, you know, all things considered for for what it offers and everything else definitely cool motorcycle and you can get these for pretty dang cheap too nowadays for under three thousand bucks you can you know sometimes pick up a decent deal of course it is a little bit older they are carbureted so you're gonna have to you know kind of deal with some of those those things but yeah all in all pretty rad motorcycle all right we're gonna come off road here i got a little dirt patch where i like to mess around doing donuts and i, I don't typically do this but this is a bike much like the Kawasaki Vulcan 650S where because of the handling and the just the, the fact that it really feels very very nimble I might even say agile where I feel like I could pull it off and I'm not going to risk dropping the bike or really hurting it or hurting myself we brought the VMAX out here we brought the Vulcan 650S I think it's only fitting that we would also bring the Honda Magna out here to do a donut or two. I hate that it gets it so dirty in the back, but you know, we can wash that and clean it up. Not a big deal. So let me get my, my trusty old tripod here. Zero to 60 on this thing, I believe is like, I don't know zero to 60, but I think quarter mile is like 12, 12 seconds and some change. So by all those standards, it's a quick bike. Compared to modern cruisers, this thing is really going to put most of those to shame. So I think there's a lot of people out there who this may be one of their first bikes because they find it kind of cheap. It's only 750 You know, it's in their budget. And then they get to a point where they're ready to upgrade. They sell this bike, go buy like a, you know, 1100cc Yamaha V-Star or something, only to find out like, wait a second. performance and handling and everything sucks on this new bike compared to my old Honda Magna you know what I mean and so yeah I think that's gonna do it though you guys all in all I like this bike it's a great motorcycle if you have an opportunity to get one at a relatively you know for pretty cheap which a lot of them are cheap I would definitely 
uh, jump on it. You know, pick one up. All right, you guys, like and subscribe if you dig it. We'll catch you on the next one. You can hit me on Instagram too at John's Moto Garage. Adios, nos vemos. All right, one thing I didn't really touch on in the video is the Harley Killer portion of it. How does this stack up with the Harleys? And the reason I always go over that is because that's what everybody wants to know. How does this cruiser stack up to the Harleys? And so, just my opinion, I think in terms of handling and performance, it blows the Harleys out of the water, just generally speaking. Yes, you can put a lot of money into a Harley and get the same performance out of it, but stock 97 Magna versus stock, say, 97 Softail or uh, Harley Dyna, I'm confident that Magna would outperform and outhandle it. But where this bike I think falls short is your fit and finish, the fact that you just got those drum brakes in the rear, and overall clearly this bike was just not as popular from 97 to 03. So whether Honda dropped the ball with marketing or you know where they dropped the ball I don't know exactly, but Harley clearly with their Dyna and their Lowrider and their other motorcycles, um, Softail rather, I think Harley showed that whatever they were doing was better than what Honda was able to offer with the Magna. And so that's my thoughts on it. Harley Killer, nah, not necessarily. But if you're doing a zero to 60 with a dude on a stock Harley, you're probably gonna beat him. And handling wise, you're gonna do better as well, in my opinion. I still love my Harleys. I'm a Harley dude, I got my Harleys, but I'm not afraid to say it. The Honda Magna, in many ways, outperforms. So let me know what you guys think, Harley versus Honda Magna. I know at the end of the day, it doesn't even matter, but those are my two cents on the subject. Woo, yeah, dog. Of course. Of course. One, two, three. <sighs> Never been down except for the one time that I dropped it trying to do donuts in the dirt.